Dear Excellencies, dear delegates, and thank you very much uh, for European Union for organizing this global forum for women in Parliament. And uh, many Mongolian women Parliament members wanted to come to join this forum, but uh, unfortunately and fortunately, uh, they couldn't join us because uh, Mongolian women parliamentary and women's caucus in the parliament is uh, just uh, hosting in Ulaanbaatar an East Nor Northeast Asian Women Parliamentarians Conference on peace and education. And uh, of course you can imagine that uh, for men it's very hard to organize Northeast Asian Conference on Peace and Peace especially to make a North and South Korea together in the table. But of course, you can guess who can brought them back together in the same table. And uh, right now in Ulaanbaatar, North Korean and South Korean parliament members, along with everybody from Russia, Japan, China, and Mongolia, and Taiwan, all together sitting like sisters. And that's what uh, women are doing in our country. And on. <laughs> And on, on behalf of uh, Women's Caucus in the Mongolian Parliament and on behalf of the government on Mon of Mongolia, it is my great honor to speak on this extraordinary gl global forum for women uh, in Parliament. From our country's, uh, country's recent history on how we brought, uh, what kind of road we took to bring women to leadership positions, I find that... Uh, a whole process of increasing women leadership is a very humanizing experience. Why I'm saying it's a humanizing? Because just an idea of a woman candidate is uh, very hard for a traditional societies to accept. So families have to change, fellow politicians have to change, voters have to change, and communities have to change to accept women's candidacy for leadership positions. I experienced it with my own family, with my own fathers and with my own family members. And also I experienced ups and downs of all the bumpy road, throughout all the bumpy roads that every time when Mongolian parliament adopted quota, the entire society became very human. And everybody is very polite. Everybody is accepting and understanding. And as soon as Parliament revoked the quota, which happened in Mongolia, and immediately the whole environment for women became very harsh. So the whole experience of bringing women leadership is uh, changing uh, the society itself already. Before we even uh, so if, before we even vote inside our Parliament, just our candidacy starts changing the families and societies. So that's why the female leadership, just an idea, as an inspiration, as an aspiration, is uh, already a good, uh, very good factor to change the society. Female leadership is also one of untapped potentials in most of the countries in the world. Like in Mongolia, for example, we have untapped mineral resources that is supposedly going to enrich our country. But I think Women leadership is in more, more untapped resources that, that Mongolia and other countries can enjoy from us, from our, from our minds, that, not just from the mind. Uh, so I always want to compare a woman's mind uh, in contrary to the minds of those resources in our countries. So uh, after a year of women's uh, increase in parliament, we tripled our participation in the parliament for the 2012 election. Like uh, from my own party, we had zero women representation in our parliament just two years ago. But uh, now we have six of us, including in, among the 11 women members of parliament. And just our presence in the parliament changes our party, changes our parliament, and changes our rhetorics and uh, all the decisions, of course, Subsequently, there are lots of stereotypes what leaders supposed to look like, how strong supposed to be a woman, to be uh, considered as a leader. But I can confess that I cried already twice in the parliament just because I was disgusted of, 
of the decision or because I just couldn't succeed or the decision I wanted to succeed, so I just cried plainly. And then people said, you are, just, you are the leader, why are you crying, why are you complaining? And I said, but I'm also supposed to represent the weak, <laughs> the weaker, pe weaker part of the people, the more vulnerable part of the people, because I'm the vulnerable person. So I immediately, uh, I easily cry and I use that uh, to, res to get support in my next voting, and, which I receive. <laughs> so, so uh, representing, not just uh, we as a leader, we shouldn't just represent the strong part of the society. It's our, it's our deep uh, belief, it's my deep belief that we will represent more part of uh, the weaker part of the society than the strong part of society. That's why we will be able to contribute uh, to reshape the world. Otherwise, uh, when uh, everybody pretends strong, when everybody pretends very content, when, then we don't see many problems in the society, many vulnerable uh, communities of the society don't dare to speak up. But when we are vulnerable, everybody speaks up. Everybody feels confident to speak up, and that's why we can see our problems from different angles, find different solutions, therefore we can offer better solutions to the world. So I would like to take this opportunity to repeat the other women leaders' calls that we never should forget to train and encourage the next generation of women leaders. Without next generation of women leaders, uh, our aspirations are not sustainable. We know it from Mongolian experiences because in Mongolia, we had uh, uh, women uh, leadership increase in 1992, uh, in 1996, and then decrease sharply in 2000, then very marginally increase in 2008, and then uh, big increase in 2012. So our road is not so, was not so reliable. So today's success, today's our success isn't the guarantee for tomorrow's success of the girls, our next generation of women. So in order to uh, make, it, make sure that we have a sustainable female leadership, we have to continue to train without party borders, without country borders, anywhere when women succeed, the world will be changing for better. So that's why I would like to invite all parliamentarians to join I Know Politics, because I'm also an expert of I Know Politics, and I would like to, uh, all of you to uh, go to the I Know Politics website to spread the world to other parts of the world, to other women leaders who couldn't join us in today's parliamentary I would like to say it a parliamentary session because I wish every parliament was like this with so many women. And uh, so please um, join I Know Politics uh, through online and uh, let's encourage more women, more, more girls. And by the way, next generation of women doesn't mean they should be our girls and our daughters. They just next to us, they could be women Older than us, they could be women who had never had the chance to go to leadership positions, even so she had all the qualities, qualifications to succeed. So sometimes it happens to me, many often times, that I have to teach elderly and more senior women how to break through glass ceiling in their own companies, in their own provinces and in their own aspirations. So there is a glass ceilings everywhere, uh, women with aspirations are everywhere, and we should help them and we should together change the world. Thank you.